this is Igor Skardov on behalf of the Martinez Historical Society Oral History Program. Uh, today we're interviewing Mr. Hirofumi Okawachi uh, in uh, Martinez. It is April 9th, 2014. So, Mr. Okawachi, welcome to the right, Oral thanks. History Program. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, you were born in Martinez. Yes, I was born in 1939, yeah. April 11, and uh, I was the youngest of six, uh -huh. and uh, so I think my dad was 42 at the time. I think I was a mistake. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, well, I don't we're know. glad. Yeah. 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 Anyway, here's, here's the uh, birth certificate with uh, Dr. Uh, Morgan. It? Morgan, yeah, yeah. Here, Martinez. So you were the youngest of six. You had five older siblings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah I was, and, and I wasn't born in a hospital or anything. I was born on a farm. Uh -huh. Yeah, the doctor came out, and uh, I was born on what is now Tavana Estates in Martinez. Okay. So we were had yeah. rented a house over there, and yeah. that's where I was born. Yeah. And uh, we had a neighbor that came over, or that was over at the time of my birth, and uh, he named me Hirofumi. Yeah. And so that's how I got my name. And so, again, um, you know, my sister's name is Fumiko, and uh, my whole name is Hiro Fumi, so I never did care for my name because yeah. I thought, you know, the, the Fumi yeah. part of it was a little bit feminine, so, <laughs> so I didn't care for that. But yeah. it's gotten better. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotten so that I know there are more um, people, especially in Japan, that has the first name of Hiro Fumi. Uh -huh. Yes. So that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Have you had occasion to go to Japan at all? Yes, I went uh, back in about 1996 uh, uh -huh. and visited my wife's relatives in um, Hiroshima and uh, mm. Osaka. Mm. I never got to visit uh, Wakayama, where my parents are from, mm. and my grandparents are from. So I never got to go in that area, but uh, it was good. Uh, Japan was very nice, very clean, mm -hmm. you know, be very picturesque. Mm -hmm. So it was a really a, a great trip. And meeting my wife's side of the family was very, very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exciting. It was good. Interesting to make those connections. Yeah, it is. You know, my father-in-law was in the uh, U.S. Army during World War II, and he right? fought. Yeah, he fought in Italy and in France. Yeah, in the four four two division, which is well known. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, uh, you know, he, although we were in camp, we were sent in a relocation camp, and his wife was also, uh, he was in Germany, uh, he was in Italy, I'm sorry, at yeah. the time, he got sent to Italy. So he was fighting overseas. He was fighting overseas for the U.S. And you guys were in the camp. And we were in a camp, right? Right. I've got to say, that, that never ceases to, to just yeah, strike me yeah. between the eyes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I, the, the he was part of the 442 division, which yeah. became pretty famous, yeah. well decorated during yeah. World War II. So, uh, yeah, he he's he's talked to me about it, you mm -hmm. know. So, it's, it's okay. It's kind of a good experience, I guess. I don't know if it's good or not. Well, ex it was an experience. It certainly was. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, if we might draw back again, and then we'll work back to the okay. uh, later period yeah. in time. What was life like on the farm? And, uh, uh, you know, back then, uh, from what my mom and dad told me, you know, because I was born in '39 and we were sent to camp in 1942, hmm. April '42. Okay, so you're very small. So you know, I don't remember the farming part of it, but um, we were economically we were pretty well. Uh, you know, we're we're pretty good financially. Mm. Uh, my grandfather and my father had rented different farms and farmed tomatoes and mm -hmm. fruit, and so uh, uh, financially we were very good. But after the war, of course, we lost almost everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that that part of it. So you know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say what it was like for my parents and my brothers who grew up. Do you have any personal memories from that early time? Not before the war, only mm -hmm. after the war when I came back, mm -hmm. and I have you know, and, and a little bit of memories of uh, the relocation camp in Topaz, Utah, which mm -hmm. where we were sent. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's talk about that then. How did that uh, come about? Well, um, 
I, when we were in camp, and I remember camp because after camp, my I talked constantly with my mom and dad about camp. So I I remember parts of camp pretty vividly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for a little kid who's only about uh, I was three and a half, three years old at the time, we went to camp and got out when it was about five and a half, six. Um, I remember what camp was like. For me, it was kind of fun because you're a little kid. You get to mm. run around all over the place. And mm. so I, I know I went to kindergarten there. I know I had a, um, I was given a, um, a ration book. So uh -huh. every time we went to the cafeteria for our meals, and yeah. breakfast, lunch, and dinner, what yeah. have you, you take one of these and, you know, the, you take out one of these stamps and so forth, and they have it. And if you buy shoes and so forth, I have a little special little stamp here where I can buy something other than food. Mm. So they did that. Um, my father worked at a warehouse, so he was one of the, there weren't a lot of jobs available, but he was able to work. Mm -hmm. So um, I think he told me that he got $7 a month mm. working there. And um, <clears throat> my sister was working at a school, and I think she got $9 a month, she told me. Mm. And I and I thought she was a teacher, but she might have been a teacher's aide mm -hmm. because she was only about 18. Was this time. all in the camp? Yeah. This is all in the camp, yeah. right? The camp was not quite finished when we got there. And I talked to my cousin, and he volunteered to go before everybody was sent there, maybe only uh, maybe a couple of months or so to to help finish all the barracks, mm -hmm. you know, finish building the barracks and so forth. And so he was allowed to pick the barrack that we lived in. So mm -hmm. in one barrack, we had uh, two of my cousins, my grandparents and my family, and then uh, one other couple. So we were all in one barrack. How big would that building be, do you think? Uh, geez, it, it's like an army barrack mm. at one level. Mm. And uh, you would have one doorway, and then you would turn to your right and go in a room that way, and you turn to the left and go to the room that way. And, and the end rooms supported couples, mm. two people. And the other rooms were larger, so we were um, in a room near the end, and uh, I remember that you, go, you walk in, there's a little pot belly stove in one corner, mm -hmm. and you have these uh, single beds with these uh, iron uh, springs that you have back mm -hmm. in those days, mm -hmm. and they would line them up, and then, and the whole, it's only one room, and for my parents to have a little bit of privacy, they strung a rope mm. and put a blanket in between. The kids were wide open, but they had mm -hmm. a little privacy because of a blanket that was in between, and yeah. that was it. Yeah. That's it. So yeah. you lived there for over two years. Yep, 1942 to 45. Yeah. yeah. We came out of camp, I think somewhere around, um, close to September, somewhere there. Mm -hmm. So we went from Topaz, Utah, oh, which is, um, if you go due east from Carson City, Nevada, and cross the border into Utah, and mm -hmm. go about another 100 to 120 miles or so, mm -hmm. you'll come to a small town called Delta, Utah, mm -hmm. and then we're about 14 miles away from there. It was a uh, desolate place, basically all sagebrush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, uh, and that was, and you know, you're pretty isolated, and that's where me, that's where most of the camps were. Were you that confined period. to be inside the camp? The whole yes, time? Um, the barbed wire fences mm. and guards were posted all the way around camp, and that continued from when we first got to camp in 1942 till I believe somewhere in 19 late 43 or early 44, and there was a 60-year-old man who was walking his dog, and the dog went through the fence, and he went after it. And this, and I read this, and uh, <clears throat> the guards said halt, and the, the, from what I heard, the, the man was hard of hearing, mm. and they shot the guy, killed him. Oh, my. And so within about two weeks, all the guards were taken off. And so we didn't have any more guards after that. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if that's the only camp that happened like that, Ooh. but we lost the guards. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I mean, you're, I mean, they're miles away from 
a lot of places to go. Yeah. You're, you know, you're in sagebrush country, yeah. so, yeah. How yeah. did the community inside the camp react to this kind of an event? Uh, I really don't know. Um, you know, mm -hmm. my dad and mom, my mom and dad were very pro-U.S. Mm -hmm. they, they thought it was very poor judgment on Japan's part to start a war. Um, I know my dad had told me that uh, they, they would be called into a, like the camp headquarters and they would be asked questions and questions would be something like, my dad said this, something like, if you had the opportunity to bomb the Golden Gate Bridge, mm. would you do it? Mm. And my dad said, I, no, there's no, that scenario would never happen mm. and I wouldn't do it, but I mean, that could never be the case. So he was okay about that. Um, I'll give you an incident of my wife's uncle. And he, uh, she had two uncles, and one became a army serviceman and went into military intelligence. Mm. And the other one became what they call a no-no boy. During World War II, you, there's two questions. One is that, do you, will you pledge allegiance to the United States? Mm -hmm and do what they ask of you. And the second question was, will you go into the military if you are called to military duty? Mm -hmm. Well, my wife's uncle said, no, no. Mm -hmm. So they took him out of camp and sent them to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And so they were actually incarcerated there in a prison in Minnesota, by for prison. Not, for not signing? Uh, yes, agreement. yes. To be in the military and to... Right, to, to say yes to, to say those yes two, questions. To yeah. two questions. And he told me there were about, um, in his Minnesota camp, they had about 200 that said no-no. Yeah. Yeah. And they were called the no-no boys. Yeah. Wow. Well, just to pursue that a little bit, and we'll get back to the other right. part later. Uh, what happened to them after the war, these no-no boys? Uh, they were uh, looked down upon even by the JACL, which is Japanese, Japanese American Citizens mm -hmm. League. But uh, I think within the last 10 years or so, they were exonerated somehow. Uh, yeah. Took that long. And I have another friend who's, uh, you have to remember that the, uh, the children of the Japanese, when their parents basically said something, that they usually followed the, what their parents said. So um, one uh, person that I know, in fact, I know him, was uh, <clears throat> drafted into the army during, and he was in camp at the time in mm -hmm. Tule Lake. And his father said, no, you, can't, you cannot join the American military. Mm. So even though he wanted to go, and um, the father said no, so he never went. And after the war was over, they imprisoned him for one year for not going. Whoa. He never forgave his father. Huh. I would think that was a little misplaced. Well, the thing was is I think he was 21 at the time. Yeah. Therefore, he's of age, correct? Yeah. Right. But he refused to go into the military until only, after the war was over. Only because of his father. Because of his father, correct. yeah. But after the war, yeah, he was in prison. He was in prison for One year. a year. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. That's one of the few that I've heard. Now, my wife's uncle never did have to go to prison, but you know. Well, so uh, so there's the full spectrum of the ones who actually volunteered and went into the military right, and, right. and served overseas right. and were shot at right. and right. killed. Right. Those who refused to go, but then they were punished for doing that. Right. That's not, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's well, hard not to you know, get emotional about there's this. An, uh, there's an author in Japan that came over and wrote a book about the two brothers, uh -huh. ones that went into the American military and the other one that said no, no. Yeah. Yeah. So I have it, but it's all in Japanese and oh. I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> and my father-in-law's picture's in there because uh, they're, they're cousins. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Right. Well. But, uh, okay. Well, if we can maybe 
switch back and, and talk a little more about your own experience in, in the camp. Yeah. Even, even as a small boy, um, what kind of well, memories do you have of that? Uh, they were good, but let me, let me show you one more thing sure. before that. Um, I, I have here, uh, this is a um, instruction of evacuation to, uh, we were in Martinez. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, we were, we were by the Fry Ranch, anyway, we were renting. And so this basically tells you that you got to re you're supposed to report at a certain place and then they'll take you by bus and we ended up in Tam Fran, which is mm -hmm. a racetrack, which yeah. is near San Mateo. Yeah. So this is a letter that says, okay, uh, you're going to be shipped to Tam Fran racetrack and it has the name of my parents and all my brothers and sisters. And then once we got to Tam Fran, uh, we were there until the main Topaz camp was ready for us to be evacuated to. And then after that, uh, once we got near the camp, we were assigned. So I, this is our housing assignment. And so we were in uh, block 27 in Topaz. Mm -hmm. And they had 30 blocks, and we were in 27. And then while we were in camp, um, we were given ration books. So I had, this is my personal ration book like this. Mm -hmm. And this is where we, you know, we, they take these little stamps off every time you have breakfast or lunch or dinner. And I noticed that I have a one special stamp where I must have picked up the shoe. So that's a different stamp that I, that I, mm -hmm. that I have. Yeah. But in camp, <clears throat> in camp, uh, I remember, uh, as a kid that, uh, I was kind of rambunctious and, and I goofed around a lot. So uh, mm. I remember they had a huge water tower outside the gate mm -hmm. and we would sneak out there and just climb on top, all the way to the top of the uh, water tank, you know, and there's a lot of bird nests and so forth. Yeah. And we used to kind of goof around. Was that before and or after the man was shot? We, at, at both. Really? We used to sneak up there. Wow. And we, we you know, I was always kind of scared, but we'd sneak up there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was bef it was before the guards and after the guards. I felt more comfortable, of course, after the yeah, guards left. Yeah. I remember um, uh, uh, here's an incident that I have. <laughs> there were four of us who were always goofing around, and we went to a uh, third or fourth grade class, and we we started making these little funny faces and noises and so forth. And this is after school was over. Yeah. And so this teacher started chasing us, and she was a teacher from Delta. She was Caucasian, mm -hmm. and she started chasing us. And so she, I ran all the way, and I ran into my grandparents' barrack, mm -hmm. and all these others, you know, ran elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And she caught one of them, yeah. and he in turn turned me in, yeah. so he came into mine. So. I remember hiding under the bed, and my grandfather had to get a broom to get me up from the bed, <laughs> and then I had to go and apologize to the teacher. So that's yeah. one incident. I, I, yeah. I remember that one. <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I used to do that. And, you know, I, I did some silly things. We used to have barbells that were close to the barracks, and we used to climb on top of the roof of the barracks and jump off. Mm. And, you know, I'm only five years old. <laughs> yeah. We're jumping off the roof of the barracks. Yeah. So, no, I had fun. We went to movies, mm. cost five cents. Uh, they had these folding chairs and the kids would just go up to the very front and just sit on the floor. And so uh, we usually watch, you know, the little serials that they have, like mm. Flash Gordon or something mm. like that. And when the main movie comes out, we just leave. No. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Sometimes we watch it, but no, no. Well, and another thing I remember is when we went to the cafeteria, uh, they have propaganda films. Mm -hmm. I, re just, I just remember one. They showed mm -hmm. the, the war and how they support the U.S. and the U.S. bonds. I, be I believe it was U.S. bonds. I'm not positive about yeah. that. But they had a, a film propaganda there yeah. at the cafeteria. Yeah. At the mess hall, they call it. Yeah. Yeah, so I remember that. I remember going to starting kindergarten school. I remember that. <clears throat> I remember another incident where um, these, I think they're, they, let's see, I was only about five years old at the time, somewhere around there. And uh, 
right in our block, block 27, there were a bunch of maybe fifth graders or sixth graders who dug a pit mm -hmm. and put planks of boards over it and yeah. made a little underground fort. Yeah. And I sneaked up on him and uh, started yelling and laughing at him and they came out and started chasing me and I ran. And, <laughs> and then I was far enough away where I turned around and uh, I was kind of yelling and laughing at him and one guy hit a slingshot and got me right above the eye right here. Ah. And so I was crying and then my a friend of ours found me and my father took me and carried me on. I remember he being carried on his shoulder and went to the hospital. You were a handful, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was a handful. <laughs> yeah, I was a handful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I, and I don't remember, but when we were in Tam Fran, I, yeah. I remember this uh, lady in San Francisco, after the war, she's in San Francisco, and she's, she said, boy, I was really scared of you because she said she was pregnant and I was a little kid and I used to bang on her, try oh. to bang on her stomach. But <laughs> oh. Nah, I was kind of bad. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, that's what I remember of camp. Yeah. I know my brother played football in camp. Mm. He was in high school. Mm. Two of my brothers did. So um, it was a dirt football field. Yeah. No grass. Uh, I remember that. <clears throat> uh, I remember also that, you know, we have, after the guards were gone, that we would go on little field trips outside mm. of camp. And uh, they had a lot of um, they had a lot of fossils in that area because they used mm. to be under under sea under mm -hmm. the sea in that area in mm. a part of Utah. So um, you know you find these little shells, seashells, and so forth like that. And you know after that, you know my mom, my grandmother, they had taken classes where they learned to make uh, pins and so forth from seashells and all mm. that. They put them all together, glue them together. Yeah, like that. So it was a fun time for me. Yeah. For, you know, uh, yeah. and yeah, I, I even remember even getting these little pins and making a hook out of it and mm. taking some bread. And yeah. There was a, uh, you could walk to a stream, not a very big one, and you can fish. Mm. So we, I used to do that. Yeah. So that, that was okay. Just so adaptable when you're young, I guess. Huh? Yeah. It kind of was normal yeah. to you. Yeah, it was yeah. very normal to me. Yeah. I spoke Japanese. You did? Yeah. Do you still speak Japanese? Very little. Yeah. Um, I spoke a lot, of, from, what I, from what my parents told me, I spoke uh, more Japanese than I did English, even mm -hmm. though, you know, but, uh, yeah, so after the war, when we came back to Martinez, mm -hmm. I, I was, oh, how do you call it, I was uh, upset that I had to go to a diction class. Yeah? Because <laughs> I thought I spoke pretty good English. Yeah? Yeah. Diction yeah. class. Yeah. In elementary school. What is that? You know, how to pronounce your A's and C's. Oh, and so I forth. see. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make sure your pronunciation is correct, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so having gotten through this uh, experience in Utah, then your family came back? Right. We, they Martinez? would bus us to Salt Lake City. Uh -huh. And then from Salt Lake City, we would be on a train. And during that time on the train, my sister got scarlet fever. Mm. So we ended up in San Francisco, and they had barracks there in Hunters Point, because mm. that's where the naval base was. So mm. we were lucky enough to be in a barrack in Hunters Point, and, or they had housing there in Hunters Point. So mm. we were in a housing there from, uh, I think, September, October, because we didn't come into Martinez till somewhere around November, early mm. November, late October, somewhere around there. Was your sister okay eventually? Yeah, 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 yeah. When she was okay, we moved into Martinez. So there's all six of your kids were still together with you? Yep. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. yeah oh, no, no, I take yeah. that back. Um, we, yeah, we were all together except my brother, uh, not the oldest, but one of my brothers went to Chicago. There's a lot of uh, Japanese because we're in Utah camp that took off to Denver and Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. They mm -hmm. eventually came back to California, but they, they went there first. Yeah. Because you can leave camp earlier as long as you don't go to the West Coast. Really? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, Washington, so, Oregon, and California yeah. was off limits. Yeah. Right. So eventually you made it back to 
San Francisco, Hunters Point. Correct. And then my, you know, we were from Martinez, mm -hmm. so my grandfather and my father scouted Martinez again to see if we could get back. Uh -huh. And we were able to, and we ended up on the sweat ranch, mm -hmm. the Frank Sweat Ranch. So, um, so uh, <laughs> your the house you'd been living in before was no longer no no longer available. Yeah. Right. Right. Were you? Was a home you owned or was it? No, no. Everything is rented. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, rental, right? Yeah, I think back then there were laws against. Uh, yeah, uh, if you were an alien, you couldn't buy land. Uh -huh. uh, and then all my brothers and sisters were underage. You had to be twenty-one. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather or my father could never buy land under their names. Mm -hmm. So, so it's all. Right. Went, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he had the opportunity to buy land, and it was affordable, but you know. <clears throat> Couldn't do it like, because yeah, of my, laws. My, my father and grandfather never did, right? Yeah. Was that generally for any anybody who was not a citizen? Or was yes. It, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. As far as I know, that was the law. Yeah. Right. right. Um, I don't know of any families personally, but I know that there are families that put it under their you know, daughter's name or mm -hmm. son's name if right. they were, if they were, they were age, 21, right? Yeah. There were even cases where they put it under a friend's name. Yeah. 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 And then there were also cases where the friend kept the property. Yeah, I could just, just yeah. see that coming, yeah. yeah. So I, I've yeah. happened, yeah. That, that's happened before too, so. Yeah. Right. Well, there's a, a note here that uh, talks about a some kind of an arrangement that had been made with uh, someone else. Uh, I didn't get it here, but uh, well, you know, when the war when the war broke out and we knew we were going to camp and we knew we couldn't farm anymore, we we had a lot of farm equipment. Mm. I mean, we had to sell our trucks and we had to sell our cars. I think fairly cheaply, mm. but we had all this equipment. And so my father and grandfather stored them in three areas. Yeah. One was in Concord, and two were in Martinez. And uh, I'm assuming that the, the, the who we stored it in Concord with didn't think we were coming back. So mm. when we did come back, we didn't have anything left. Mm. Uh, and the other one, um, we got about 10, 15 percent back. Mm. But when we were on the uh, <coughs> Frank Sweat Ranch, we got all of it back. Mm. And that's where, he, in fact, that's where we ended up renting at his farm. Yeah. At the Sweat, yeah, farm. Sweat Ranch. That's out there now where Alhambra Valley Road and, uh, and Release Valley come yeah, together? Yeah, they come much. together, right. Yeah. yeah. And then the, the side of the road, uh, the creek on that side is Frank Sweat, and on the other side of the creek was John Sweat, mm. Jr. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. a far, old fa Martinez family. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Frank and John were sons of John Swift mm -hmm. Sr., who was the father of education in yeah. California. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So. Friend of John Muir, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my grandfather worked on John Muir Ranch about a year. Is that right? Right. He came in 1905. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, you know, John Muir was never home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> from what I, from yeah. what I hear. So. Right. Yeah. 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 1905. 1905, right. Which part of the ranch do you know, happen to know where it is? Uh, I think it's at the time is where the house, the, the John Muir, where the house is, right? Well, the actual site yeah. where the house the is. The site, yeah. yeah. Right, I think right in there. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, and, and, and I think that besides orchards, they had a little bit of vineyards too. And mm -hmm. I think my grandfather planted some of the vineyards, but I'm not positive mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. I know on the Sweat Ranch, you know, they had a uh, kind of like a winery back there uh -huh. on the John Sweat site on the other side of the creek. Uh -huh. And uh, but but you know, by the time we got there after the war, it was it was nothing. Mm. Yeah, it's just like a old shed. And so so coming back from the camps back to here and kind of reestablishing again the presence yes. in the Sweat Ranch. Yeah, right. Uh, it was lucky that my my grandfather didn't work after that, and mm. he had diabetes, mm. and it was lucky that my father was able to find a job with <clears throat> Sweat Ranch, on the Sweat Ranch, mm -hmm. and my grandfather still wanted to farm, 
so we still had enough money in the bank to buy a truck and then we leased a ranch out in Bethel Island mm. growing tomatoes yeah and uh, they used to go out there there's a house there so that sometimes they would stay overnight there but generally speaking they would come back and forth every day from Bethel Island mm. to Martinez and <clears throat> the crop was great mm -hmm. uh, but they couldn't find any workers to pick tomatoes yeah so they had a high production of tomatoes yeah but nobody to pick them so we lost everything wow. financially mm. yeah and lost the truck <laughs> oh lost man the, lost everything yeah yeah so now we became workers for other farmers yeah right it's a hard life yeah it is it was yeah yeah so your whole family was in still in farming yeah they were all in farming yeah my cousins were in farming um one cousin became the foreman of the Frank Sweat Ranch, and my father and his other brother worked on the John Sweat side. So, yeah. yeah. All three all three brothers came back in Martinez. Yeah? Yeah, all three. And how about your sisters? Uh, I mean, all, yeah, all my father's brothers, I mean. Oh, came, oh yeah. your father's brothers. My yeah. father's brothers all ended up I on see. the Sweat Ranch. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, see. yeah. With all their families? With all their families, wow. yeah. So the family is really stuck together. Yeah, quite yeah. a bit. All right. Well, we were, uh, we'd come back to the ranch. And oh, yeah, uh-huh. And then when we came back, I was of age to start first grade. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, the school had already started. So, um, and I was always worried, you know, because of, of wartime, coming back from camp. And I'm only a first grader, so mm. six years old. <clears throat> and going to school was uh, a little anxious. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So when we came back to Martinez, there was another family that came, and he was this friend of mine was the same age as me. Mm -hmm. And we both went to first grade together, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of name calling, cat calling, and so forth. Yeah. And so it really bo it bothered me, but you know I I could understand it. And this friend of mine that when he went to school for one day and then he didn't go back till mm. maybe four days later or something mm -hmm. like that because it bothered him so much. Yeah, I was lucky. I I'll remember this name Anthony Anthony Sensapana. Sensapana. Yeah, yeah, the teacher, the first grade teacher, named Anthony as my guardian. Mm. He's a first grader also. Yeah. And he was a little tough first grade. Was he a big guy? He, no, yeah. he wasn't. But he stood up for me, you yeah. know, because he was in charge of me. Well, that was interesting. The teacher sort of designated him. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, kind boy. Of an interesting that, approach. He's a lifesaver. He, yeah. he, he really helped me out a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's, it's the upper kids that kind of start saying things to you. Yeah. And in a way, it's, you know, they're probably their parents or their brothers or what have you went, was at war. And well, we had all this years and years and years of propaganda. Yeah, right. right. That too. So, yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, it, it it was good. It was good. And, you did know, going th Did their kind of relax, the, the tensions relax over time or did, did I just... Well, in Martinez they did, uh -huh. for me. Yeah. Uh, I think I was lucky in a way because um, I participated in a lot of athletics mm. and I was okay, you know, it was good, pretty good. Well, for me it was good. <laughs> <laughs> what did you play? Uh, oh, well, you know, when you're at the elementary, oh, you're, elementary you're, you yeah. could be kickball and all that, yeah, yeah. but eventually in high school I ended up playing uh, you know, football, basketball and track and did, did pretty well. and. Uh, so, but by the, before I got there, uh, I think athletics helped me, mm -hmm. you know, so, so I got to know more people because of athletics, yeah. and so things got better and better and better, yeah. But the, the first two years, yeah, yeah, it was tough, Yeah, it was tough, yeah. You're always afraid of the upperclassmen, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bigger, <laughs> yeah. That's 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 the point. The bigger. <laughs> and you know, and then coming back, I wasn't an outgoing person. Mm -hmm. I was very sh well. Back then, I was very shy and timid, of course. And I, I I grew out of that a little bit. Yeah, 
Kind of by necessity, I guess. Yeah, something by necessities, and you know, after, after a while, I would participate in student activities and mm -hmm. so forth. Yeah, I mean, not only athletics, but other things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that part was good. Um, so, um, and Martinez is a great town, really. You know, yeah, it's very cliquish, but it's yeah, good town. <laughs> it's a good town. Yeah, enjoyed it here. So I enjoyed growing all, up here. All the rest of your family. Your brothers and sisters, did they all go to the Martini schools too? Uh, yeah, my, my sister was in high school when we were sent to camp. My brother was also at the high school. My other, other two brothers were at the junior high level. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was, I, you know, I was too small and my other sister was just starting because she's oh, three years ahead of me. So when you guys came back, did they resume? Right. Again? Yeah. My uh, my older sister ended up in Chicago instead of Martin, California. Mm -hmm. My uh, <clears throat> next brother ended up going to University of California. He graduated, by the way, in uh, the relocation camp. Graduated in the relocation high school. Camp. Yeah. Oh, high school. And then came back to California, and yeah. then he started University of California. Wow. Yeah. And then uh, my other brother, next, his name is, well, my sister's name is Nabucco. She's the oldest. Mm -hmm. She ended up in Chicago. My next sibling is George. He ended up here, went to UC Berkeley, became a doctor, medical doctor. And then um, the next brother is Tineo. We often call him Moose because he was pretty good size for Japanese. Mm -hmm. And he ended up being a mechanic in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And my other brother is next, and he became a he went he became a schoolboy in San Francisco, which means you live in a house, you do housework, mm -hmm. and go to high school at the same time. Hmm. He did that for a while, then he eventually came back to Martinez and graduated from Alhambra High School hmm. in 1948 or 49, <clears throat> and he eventually became a med tech medical technician. Was there an Lab advantage tech. to going to San Francisco school, or is, why would I that? think they did that because a lot of people did that, and they maybe some of his friends were there, mm. and you know, and then you know, you're living on a farm, and the, the house we lived in was very mm. small, mm. so uh, so he did that. In fact, Tineo, the mechanic, he also did the schoolboy thing mm -hmm. too. He graduated from Washington in San Francisco, mm -hmm. then went to Chicago. Yeah. And then my next sister is Fumiko, which is one above me, and she ended up graduating from Alhambra in 55. And then I went to Alhambra and graduated in 57. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I talked to my cousin, and I, I thought my sister had graduated, well, she didn't finish the school year because we were sent to camp, but, but uh, a, a, somebody that I knew because of my teaching at Alhambra High School, they gave me a little article and it said that they sent a Alhambra High School diploma to my older sister, even though she didn't quite finish out the year. Mm. So I'm assuming she had a Alhambra High School diploma. Yeah. So not, yeah. But I never saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It was good. Uh, you know, it's surprising the way I, you know, you're born in Martinez and then you get sent to camp, and yeah. come back to Martinez, Martinez, and go to college, and come, come back, back to Martinez, Martinez, and teach in Martinez. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was very nice growing up in the country, or rural area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, of course, you don't know anything else, but you know, I still like it here. Yeah. So you went to school here in uh, Yeah, I graduated on well. Hammer in 1957, yeah. and I graduated from Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo, College mm -hmm. and got a degree and uh, ended up uh, here at Alhambra High School teaching science. Yeah, uh, I mean, got a number of degrees. It looks like. Huh? Uh, yeah, I was lucky. I got a bachelor of science and a master's in, in Cal Poly, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. San Luis Obispo. San country? Luis Obispo. Yeah. Right. It's a good school. Yeah, enjoyed yeah. it. Nice country there. Yeah, it was a good school. Yeah. And you know, my my father kind of believed in education, so you know, we, did, we really didn't have much money. I mean, I had to work on my you know, work, my work my way in college also, and luckily for me, my sister helped also. But she had graduated from Armstrong College in Berkeley, mm -hmm. which had been like business college, 
And uh, the only, my brother that became the mechanic and my sister who became a housewife are the only two that didn't go to a college. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, all the rest of us went to college, lucky to go to college. The med tech went to a, uh, at that time they had a lab tech or a med tech, mm -hmm. two year college yeah. deal. Yeah. Yeah. But he had, he got his all his training during the Korean War in, in Korea. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. He was a mash guy? <laughs> yeah, he was in the uh, yeah. He was up front and then they found out that he, he was a med tech and yeah. they took him off the front. Yeah. Which kinda of, it was lucky because if he he used to send me patches of what company he was in all the time and yeah. he kept getting wiped out. Oh. One patch to another patch, another patch. The company would be Oh, they just yeah. They got ambushed. They got killed. Huh. Really, yeah, Korean War. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem to be a, such a good thing as any kind of yeah, good war. Yeah, war time's pretty, yeah, it's tough, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So your family has been in the military as well? Yeah, uh, my oldest brother George was in the military right after the war. He ended up in Okinawa in the Philippines <clears throat> after the war. Uh, my brother Kim went in the Korean War, and my brother Taneo was ready to go to Korea during the Korean War mm -hmm. time, and uh, he was on R&R &R and was in an accident, broke his neck, and became uh, paralyzed. Oh. So he ended up being a quadriplegic at age 22, mm. and he survived for 60 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Life I give him a lot of credit, boy. Being yeah. in a wheelchair for 60 years is yeah. tough. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, your family has been engaged in a lot of different things. Uh, did your parents uh, live on to a nice ripe old age? Well, yeah. Uh, well, my dad passed away when he was 74 from mm -hmm. a heart attack, <clears throat> and but my mom lived till she was 91, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, she was good, and she was. She was good until about the last month. Mm -hmm. Got a little weaker, and then the last couple of weeks of her life, yeah. you know, she deteriorated a little bit. But uh, so, did they live in Martinez? That whole time? They lived in Martinez from out in the valley, Humber Valley, and mm -hmm. then they ended up moving to Virginia Hills mm -hmm. when the new housing track had developed. Yeah, and then uh, my, my sister worked for Social Security over in Berkeley, mm -hmm. so they ended up selling their house in Martinez and moved to Oakland to a condominium. Mm -hmm. So they were there in, in Chinatown, mm -hmm. and which was not too far away from the uh, Oakland Buddhist Church. Mm -hmm. where my, you know, my mom would go to the church. Mm -hmm. So that that part turned out pretty good, yeah. Were you, was your family pretty religious? No, no? not really, uh -huh. not really. I mean, basically we would go to church because of services and mm -hmm. funeral weddings and so forth, yeah. but no, no. Okay, well, yeah. so you went through high school in Alhambra, went to Cal Poly. Somewhere along the way, you met this lady. Yeah, I met, <laughs> I met my wife at Cal Poly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in 1962, I believe, somewhere around there. Yeah. So we got married in 1967. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, Do you recall yeah. how you met? At the cafeteria. Yeah. You know, at, uh, when I went to Cal Poly now, they... It was a all boys college about uh, two years or so before I went there, and mm -hmm. then they started allowing girls in. Mm -hmm. And so the ratio of boys to girls were like five or six to one. Yeah. And so yeah. you kind of got to know a lot of the girls that got there. So, yeah, yeah. I think when she started Cal Poly, it wasn't even fifty fifty yet. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I met her, and then you know, and you don't see a lot of uh, Asian gals there at the time. Mm -hmm. So. So I met her at the cafeteria. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Were you in line together? Again? Pardon? Were you in line together? <laughs> no, no, no. She yeah. was eating with some of her friends. Yeah. So I took some of my friends and we went over there and introduced ourselves. Yeah. And, yeah. Started talking to them. Yeah. So we met. Well, started with a good thing. Yeah, it turned out to be good. <laughs> Real good. <laughs> good for me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we got. Yeah. So you got these various degrees in Cal Poly and then came back to Martinez directly or some other way? Yeah, Martinez directly, yeah. right. 
I, I was lucky, I still knew the teachers and some administrators, and uh, I ended up uh, getting out of Cal Poly in 1963, and I thought I was going to go in the military at the time. I got drafted, mm -hmm. but, uh, they, um, but I ended up subbing for mm -hmm. about three-fourths of the year at Alhambra, mm -hmm. most of it in Alhambra High School, and then uh, the following year I got a full-time job there. Mm -hmm. at March in 1964. So when I started um, teaching, I was coaching uh, football and basketball, mm -hmm. uh, freshman yeah, football and JV basketball, or freshman basketball also. So, uh, it, was a, it was a very good experience. Your athletic experience <laughs> came in handy at that yeah, point. Right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, it, it did, it did. And that was one of the last years in which State of California gave out what they call a general secondary credential, which means that you can teach basically legally any course at the high school, mm. even though you're not qualified. Mm. But uh, so you know, other than your sciences, I taught a lot of other things yeah. where they need one spot here, or one spot mm -hmm. there, because the newer teachers can only basically teach their major and minor mm. at the time, right? So, but you had degrees in science, so you gravitated. Yeah, I had a mi yeah. minor in, in biological science, mm -hmm. and during the summertime, uh, I received some National Science Foundation grants, so I took some science courses mm -hmm. in the summer. So, basically, I had enough units to have a major in science, bio life science. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was good. I, so that translated into teaching, teaching. Uh, yeah, I, you know, my basically my major is physical education, but mm -hmm. I never taught physical education. Stayed in the classroom all the time. I yeah. liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but you were coaching I was also? coaching football and basketball. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, when I was subbing, I actually subbed in phys PE classes, physical education classes. Hmm. And, I, and I love sports, but, but teaching physical education was kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a difference between playing and yeah. teaching. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the classroom was, yeah, I liked the classroom a little better. Mm-hmm. It's good. Enjoyed it. So you were there for a good long time. Very long. I taught there at Alhambra for 37 years, 1964 yeah. to 201, and uh, I was ready to go. Yeah? Yeah, it was good. I, the kids were good, though. I mean, What kind of changes did you see during that time? How did that sort of uh, morph into the present? Well, <clears throat> when I first started teaching, you know, you're a little bit more concerned. I was always wearing a, either some kind of sport coat or a tie, mm -hmm. you know. And then eventually, you know, because of, I think, Cal Berkeley, mm -hmm. things started to loosen mm -hmm. up and uh, you started going without ties, without jackets and so forth. And after a while, this is as far as dress code is concerned, then after a while, you know, teachers are starting to wear cords or khakis and shirts, regular shirts and yeah. so forth. So the dressing of it um, really changed. And I don't know, and I, and I and I became one of the modern guys, and mm. I did dress loosely. But I don't know if if he had still kept the coat and tie, that the kids may respond mm. and respect more. Mm. But I'm not sure. But I, I think about that once in a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know. Well, how do you feel about education as it was toward later in your career compared to earlier? Um, It was, well for me, because I had never practiced teaching in the, in college, I never practiced teaching in the classroom because I had a physical education major. major. Uh, it was tough at first, but the kids were more disciplined mm. in general. And then as the years go, you can, you can see mm -hmm. that the students were becoming more and more, not, not as well disciplined, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming it basically came from the home life, mm. and then uh, you had more and more parents where the husband and wife both started working. Mm -hmm. So you know, when the students went back to their families' home, uh, no one was there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, discipline became a problem more and more. Mm. I thought it was hard. It was hard. It's, sometimes you spend a lot of your t classroom time disciplining where you yeah. are. Yeah. Teaching, yeah. yeah. So that part it was kind of hard, but the kids were good. I, mean, I think the kids were the same whether they were 
back in 1964 or the year 2000. You know, you have your, you still have your good core, and you have kids that like to fool around. I mean, that's true all the way. Yeah. I think I found out that you had to have a good rapport with the students. Yeah. Somehow, you know, and. For me, uh, I, I think I ended up with a pretty good rapport with the kids because I would go to their activities or I would mm. go to their games and yeah. so forth. Yeah. Even though I stopped coaching, mm -hmm. I would still see the kids, you know, and yeah. tell them. And yeah. They would see me there. And sort of be engaged. Yeah, yeah. and then I would go to plays and uh -huh. I would go to student government activities and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So I, I think. The kids know that you know you're showing some kind of interest in them, other than in classroom. Yeah, and I think that helps. Yeah, it really helps. See you more as a person, really. Than yeah, right. An right. Yeah. There. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and I, to me, I found out you can't be hard nosed at everybody. You know, you have to kind of roll with the punches. Mm. And I think students, in a way, appreciate some of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still have to have some discipline, but yeah, yeah, you know. Okay, so uh, your wife also taught as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's. <laughs> I remember she was taking a class, and her instructor at Cal Poly said, "You go, you'll never be a teacher, mm. <laughs> you know, unless you speak out." But mm. my wife is. She's a good teacher. She, you know, she she changes hats when she goes in the yeah. classroom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, she taught in in a variety of places uh, as well. Well, she taught. In Arkansas and, oh, uh -huh. No, no. She she went. Was that after you were married? She, went, she was teaching. In yeah. No. She taught in Salinas before we got married, mm. and she taught in San Jose before we got married. And then once we got married, she came to Martinez and taught. Yeah. Yeah. Also at Alheimer. No, she ended up elementary at John Sweat Elementary. John Sweat. Okay. Yeah. 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 She taught up, I think, two years at Martinez Elementary, and then transferred to John Sweat Elementary. Mm -hmm. But Arkansas, when you mentioned Arkansas, <clears throat> that's where she went to um, relocation camp in Arkansas. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, from when you were, would talk with each other, was there a lot of differences between your experience and hers? Well, you know, uh, I told Debbie this, you know, she was born on the way to camp. Really? Yeah. Uh, she. Her mom was going toward, I think she was going her way to Arkansas, but anyway, she ended up in Fresno, mm. and she was born in Fresno on the way to camp. Mm. And the story about that is that there were two Japanese ladies, her mom being one, who had babies the same mm. day. Wow. Yeah. So, huh. after so the, the train uh, stopped? And they yeah, well, yeah well, and, they were, and they got back on a different train, I believe. Huh. Yeah, they weren't there the whole time, but uh, when they... When she got back on the train after the baby was born, after Janet was born, she noticed that the baby that she had in her arms did not have this little black s s birth spot on this one finger. Yeah. So she said she got the wrong baby. Huh. So they didn't let the train go, and they went to find the other lady, the Japanese lady, and she and my wife. The, the lady had my wife there because they had that little spot on yeah, their little yeah, finger. Yeah. So they had exchanged babies. <laughs> yeah. So All because it, of so that it, one little yeah, mark. So huh? if, yeah. So if Janet's mom didn't see that little birth spot, you know, Who she would have been. She would have yeah, yeah. She would have been with other other family. Another yeah. family altogether. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how small things make such a big difference later on in life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure does. Yeah. And she looks like her mom too. Yeah. You know? Yeah, she does. So they ended up in uh, jo Ro Rower in Arkansas, and then uh, because her husband, Janet's dad, was stationed like in, um, near Mississippi at one time and so forth, or Missouri sometime. Mm -hmm. she, you know, you don't forget you're allowed to go out of camp as long as you don't want to go to the West Coast states. <coughs> so, I, <coughs> excuse me. One time, my mother-in-law was telling me that. She was taking a bus to go see her husband, mm -hmm. and this this friendly lady started talking to her and, and asked her, you know, what nationality. She said Japanese, and she said, "Oh no, my dear, don't say that. Mm. Say you're Chinese." Mm. And so, so her husband was in the military. Yeah, 
Well, he, that's my wife's that's father, who went, the one to, who went, went to that's, Fra uh, Italy and France. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. So. so anyway, that, uh, that's what there's happened. Some, there's just way too much irony in all of this, <laughs> isn't there? Yeah. 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 But, uh, oh, other things too, you know, when thinking back, my grandfather, you know, at one time was thinking of going back to Japan, so mm -hmm. they would put money in banks like Bank of Tokyo and Sumitomo Bank in Japan, mm -hmm. so that if they go back there, they'll have money. But uh, when the war broke out, they lost almost everything mm -hmm. that was in the Japanese banks. Yeah. So I think they were able to achieve somewhere like 10 cents on a dollar after mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Well, it's pretty remarkable how your family bounced back from all these setbacks. Yeah. It, Such well, a successful uh, well, yeah. bunch of accomplishers. <laughs> grew a lot of there. Japanese families, they had, to, they had to bounce back. Yeah. And some bounced back very good, really well. Yeah. 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 So uh, you live in Martinez now? No, I live in Benicia. Benicia. Um, when Jan and I got married, we had an apartment in Concord, and then we thought we'd look for a home, <clears throat> and we found that the cheapest place was in Benicia yeah. at the time, so. Yeah. And the new bridge was built, uh -huh. and, and the new housing track went up, so we ended up buying in Benicia, you know, which, you know, it was only 25 cents to cross the bridge at the time. Yeah. And, uh, both ways, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought it was a good deal, mm -hmm. Benicia. Yeah. So we moved to Benicia back in 1969. So you, you're still in Benicia then? Lived in Benicia, same house for let's see, you know, 69, 40, almost 45 years. Wow. 44 years. Yeah. So it's you, still a nice, pretty good area. Yeah. 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 We're up on a hill. We got a great view. So view of Martinez. Good. View of Martinez. <laughs> view of Martinez. Yeah. View of Shell also. Oh, well. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I, can't, I can't complain about my life. It's been good. Well, you've certainly gone through a lot of stuff, and it uh, sounds like uh, resiliency is kind of the hallmark of your family. Yeah. 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 You know, I enjoyed Martinez. Yeah. Well. It's, it's a good life here. Yeah. Yeah. Was there anything else that we wanted to cover? That, uh... Oh, no. I, I, I remember, though, as, as, you know, because financially we weren't very good after the war, as, uh, you know, as, as a little kid, you're, you know, you're working on the farm, <coughs> even in your elementary years. So, yes. You're picking prunes. Mm -hmm. or you're, you're always on working. And, yeah. That's why I hate farming, by the way. <laughs> I guess that happens. I don't care for farming. Yeah. yeah. The hours are long, you know, yeah. during the, the season. The risks are high, yeah. 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 Right. So, but, uh, you know, pr provided a life for us, didn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Well, your family certainly made it through that time in a and stayed intact. That's really quite remarkable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we were a pretty close knit family. Yeah. I guess most most during wartime, you're always close. I guess. Well, right. it's it seems to be that's a that's a real precious thing to have. Isn't it? Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, pretty, it's good. Yeah. Well, it's been a great pleasure speaking with you. Oh, Jesus! Well, thank you for the. I really uh, enjoyed it a lot. Interview here. I, uh, I enjoyed this. It was very nice. It was very, very, very nice. nice to be asked. Right? <laughs> well, I you, feel honored. <laughs> you have a really significant piece of history to help us to remember, uh, and we just need to make sure we do those things. And in the course of doing all that, we learned about all these other great things as well. Yeah. So. Well, I hope I provided you a little bit of what it was like, anyway, back then. Yeah, back then. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's tough getting old. <laughs> yeah, it's not for sissies, yeah. is it? <laughs> well, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah. Okay.